So therefore, our actions every day is very important. And our actions are related to nature, to the whole cosmos. So what one does doesn't just affect themselves. It affects other people and it affects the whole universe. We studied water during solar eclipses and when comet Schumacher-Levy was passing in those periods of time. And it turned out that a tissue culture in water, when a solar eclipse is in the offing a week ahead of time before the eclipse, when everything is still far ahead, it already begins to fade. The water showed a direct connection to the event. The system of the universe exists as a single perfect organism. All of its parts, including us and our Earth, are inseparably bound together by huge streams of information. And on our planet, water plays the key role in how the information is exchanged. In effect, it is the medium through which all nature is governed. The Chinese chronicles tell about the Taoist hermit Shang Shun, who is known to have met repeatedly with Genghis Khan for lengthy conversations. Once, when the country was being ravaged by an unknown epidemic, the ruler of Beijing asked the hermit to protect the people. He prayed, and the sickness retreated. In reply to numerous expressions of gratitude, the hermit said, prayer is not a thing. All it requires is faith. Exactly, exactly. Many people think that thought or intention, the word we use is intention, can be imprinted on the water. That is a possibility. Like prayer, if you go to Lourdes, is it prayer that is imprinted on the water? Yes, sir. The Holy Scripture contains these marvelous words, nothing shall be impossible to him who believes. If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Here the mountain is just a metaphor, of course, but it helps us understand the power of faith. All of mankind's sacred books contain stories about people who were able to create miracles because of their profound spiritual knowledge. Legend tells us that the sea parted before Moses because of his unflinching faith that the Lord would not abandon his people. We have totally indisputable evidence that prayer influences sick people to get better. And it's caused absolutely fantastical recoveries, such as the spread of gangrene suddenly stopping in a person who already had it. With holy water, when it is poured over sick animals or a dying plant, they revive. Those are the facts, and no physical chemist currently is able to understand it. They simply can't. January the 18th. It is the eve of the Orthodox Feast of the Epiphany. Two flasks are filled with ordinary tap water. Early in the morning, one of them is set inside the church near the vessel over which the sacrament of sanctification is to be performed. Every year on January 19th, the faithful and even non-believers hurry into churches to pick up some of the baptismal water. It is believed to possess extraordinary properties. In order to confirm or refute this, the two flasks were taken to the laboratory for study immediately after the service. 
Here, the water was frozen in a cryogenic chamber and photographed under the microscope. The crystals of the tap water looked like a chaotic, diffused spot. while the water that had been in the church had the rectilinear symmetrical form of a six-pointed star. It is well known that holy water has a very powerful and stable structure. This water can pass its properties. Take only 10 grams of it and dilute it in 60 liters of common water and the whole amount will have the properties of the holy water. Perhaps scientists will tell us sometime what prayer is. Perhaps scientists will tell us sometime what happens with human nature under the influence of divine grace. In my view, what Jesus did represented an informational influence on the water. He acted with his spirituality. He acted through higher spiritual powers. And it is now quite reasonable to imagine changing water in such a way that it would become fairly firm. It could be radiation, but could it be only subtle energy? And we are very interested in how subtle energy can be detected by a material. In our time, everybody is sure that weather on the planet is determined by cyclones and anticyclones. We accept the weatherman's daily forecasts as inevitable. Actually, we are waiting for water to make its appearance. Evaporating and turning into whimsical clouds and towering thunderheads, it creates the architectonics of the sky. The countless shades of sunrise and sunset, the rainbows that shoot across the sky, all of them result from the refraction of light rays by the moisture in the atmosphere. Clouds carry this moisture over great distances and it spills down as rain. Rain, hail, snow and mist, winds and storms, gales and hurricanes. All of these complex processes depend on water's mood. We try to second guess how it is going to behave and where on the earth it will bestow its favors, and where it will unleash its wrath. The most we can do is to observe these processes from space, but only observe them. But how alluring the thought is of subjugating the weather. What a sweet bait that is for human vanity. Many peoples have preserved the practice of influencing weather and atmospheric phenomena. These rituals are carefully passed down, unchanged, from generation to generation. If my tributes have been convincing enough, if I have chosen the right time and the right place, and have recited the mantras correctly, and from a pure heart, then the Lord of the water gives us water. We do not place much trust in actions which may be met with a smile these days. Could it be that just one human, not some huge modern laboratory with the latest technologies, but just a single person, could influence a natural process solely by the force of his desire and intentions? <laughs> 